So today's goal is to try to move as far forward as I can on the reassembly of this big do-all milling machine. And if you've been with the channel for a long time, you'll already know why this thing is in a thousand different pieces. And for those who don't know, it's because it was damaged. It was damaged when I got it. I had to send some parts off and have them machined and some, like the smaller casting, I did in-house. And now that all of that's done, it's time to start fitting these parts back together. So let me bring in, I'll show you the parts that we're going to be fitting, you know, explain a little in a little more detail what's going on and why it's happening. And we'll see if we can't start fitting these two back together. It's going to be fun. So in last week's video, we installed the knee of this machine onto the main casting, and now it's time to install the saddle onto the knee. Now, here's where I'm going to run into some fitment issues, and that's because both the saddle and the top of this knee had some pretty significant damage from scoring, and I sent this off about a year ago, had it ground by Cash Masters up uh, at Minnesota, and we ground off just enough of these two machine surfaces to get them both parallel and flat again, because they had quite a belly in them from the scoring. Now there is still a lot of low scoring marks left behind here, but that's just cosmetic damage, it's not going to hurt anything, and it to remove all of the cast iron that would be required to get to the bottom of the lowest score mark here would cause major fitment issues when we're going back together. And I opted to not do that simply because I'm far more concerned about what this thing functions like than what the machine ways look like. As long as they're accurate and flat, that's really all I care. So let's grab the saddle. We'll flip it upside down on this thing and hand grind in our oil reliefs. Then we'll flip it start fitting it with a gib to uh, the top of the knee here. Push forward. Okay. Now, um, can you let that down super slow? Yeah, you got to put it in the thing. Yeah, and just super slow. Hold on, just a sec. Super slow. Okay, you're all right. Excellent. Thank you, love. Hello, Cora. So the machine ways on the bottom of the saddle here were damaged just like you see on seen on the top of the uh, knee. Now I machined these on the shaper, got them back flat, there's a little surface corrosion there I got to clean off, but that's just from them sitting. And then me, Adam Booth, and Lance Baltzy scraped them flat after the machining process. I do need to modify the way that the oil is distributed on these ways. You can see it's just got a cross up here, the front and the back, and then a straight line down the length of the way, which you know, not a big fan of that design. So I'm going to zigzag. I'm just going to take my air die grinder and I'm going to zigzag a line all the way down this machine surface. That way oil gets just distributed more evenly um, between these two mating surfaces and we don't repeat the damage that happened to this thing in the first place.
So this side is done other than the bird. I really like the way that that looks. And we've more than doubled our uh, oil galley uh, surface area here. And what little bit of machine surface area we lost, I mean, we make up for it in oiling ability now. And I made these relatively deep, no deeper than the original, but deep enough because any ones, any machine that I've ever taken apart, these most of the time, if the machine's got any age on it, are all clogged up. So the more of this that you have within reason, and the deeper they are, I think the better you are off. You know, that, after I deburr it, I think is plenty good for that surface. So the bottom of the saddle, the oil passages are modified, and now before I put the saddle on to the knee, what I want to do is break up the surface just a little bit with a hand scraper. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to flake the surface. <laughs> I laugh because I'm not even good at flaking. In fact, I'm, the only flaking that I have experience with involves a bowl of cereal in it and milk. And, but it did turn out great. It's too early for this. Um, the only flaking that I have experience with is a little bit of uh, practicing on the bench. You know, I'm not good at it. The purpose for flaking or breaking up a machine surface, right, these nice, flat, smooth ground ways, I'm going to take this and I'm going to act like I'm damaging them, and I'm going to break the surface area up a little bit, give places for oil to pool in, little, little deep cuts. They're not deep. They're a few tenths of a thousandth of an inch deep, but you get the idea. I want to break this surface up a little bit. It don't have to look good, okay? So don't judge me. It has to work. Um, so that's the idea. You know, uh, this type of work, using one of these efficiently, uh, it takes a long time. In fact, some people would argue it takes basically a lifetime to get really, really, really good at machine rebuilding and flaking. A lot of, uh, lot of repetition and practice, which I haven't done, so that's what I'm going to do. Flake this really quick, then we can put it on there. I can check the fit of the gib, and then I can either modify or whatever I have to do for my next step. So when I smack the back of this, the way that my hand turns, it makes basically a little S. And, you know, it's just the best looking movement that I've found to do. It's the most consistent that I can get. You know, some people are just not that great at it, and I am not. So, not trying to be. Really.
All right, so I am really happy with the contact path that I got here on my machine ways. I wiped a little blue on the bottom of the saddle, slid the gib in, slid this thing back and forth, and that blue transferred from this to this, showing where they're making contact. Now I probably used, I didn't probably, I used a little too much blue, but uh, it looks like you know it's sitting on here really nice. I didn't tighten this down all the way, just held it in by hand, you know, snug, which I had to basically because this is no longer able to be adjusted because I machined this surface, or we had this machined and this machined, and that means that this tapered gib, which slides up in here, no longer fits proper. So I'm gonna have to, I have a couple options really. A, I can make a brand new tapered gib, which I have done before. It is not a whole lot of fun, which is, and that's probably the best option. Or B, I can pad the back of this gib with some turkite, you know, which is probably what I'll do. And in fact, for this machine, not being, not being a production piece, it, it's probably the quickest and easiest way and it's not going to cause me any problems, I'm sure, but we'll see. You know, I'm not 100% certain on what I'm going to do yet, but something revolving, modifying this is coming up. So I'm happy with the way that this fits. We want an even distribution of weight between this and our machine ways. That way we don't get accelerated wear, uh, you know, its accuracy lasts for a while, on and on and on. So really, really pretty, pretty happy with the way that that fits, actually. So because I want to move forward on the assembly of this machine, just for temporary, I've got a 20 thousandths piece of shim stock that I'm going to put behind this gib, slide it in, and I found that that gives me about exactly what I need. So we're going to either have to make a new gib or pad the back of this one. But this is just temporary, like I said, not a good idea for a long-term fix, uh, what, uh, what I just did there. But that's okay, because all I want to do right now is move forward with the assembly of this machine. I can literally fit a gib to this any time. So long as it's tight and in adjustment and everything's where it's gonna be, that's really all I'm worried about at the moment. So I'm gonna put this shim gib, shimmed gib in and assemble the chip shield. Then I can put in the crossfeed nut. Oh. So because I machined the bottom of the saddle and the top of the knee, that changes things in relationship to this, which is the crossfeed nuts. So it's going to affect only one of these two that are permanently fixed together, and that is the saddle front to back, because this table surface is now just ever so slightly closer in relationship to this machined hole than it was originally when it was first fit. That means I could have screw binding issues on, you know, on the saddle forward and back. Originally, it was spaced with just this shim here, which is stamped to number 37, just like every other casting on this thing. But there's a lot of stuff that you that has to be taken into account, you know, when you uh, do, an, do a change like this or repair a machine. It's not just, you know, machine your surfaces and put it back together, right? We got that we'll have to potentially deal with and, and the gib. What is it, girl? Hmm? What is it?
So remembering where all these little oil lines go, it's kind of a pain, but they are you know, a fixed length. So this manifold here with all these lines on it, oils everything to do with the saddle and table of this machine. We've got oil hole there and there, and we've got lines that hook into the bottom. We've got lines that feed the cross feed nut. We've got lines that feed the ways. Everything, like I said, is oiled from this manifold here. So kind of tricky, actually. Get it all where it needs to go. All right, so this is probably gonna be the last piece I'm gonna be able to install this week, but I wanna to touch on this super quick. I think the engineering in this piece alone is awesome. So this houses the lead screw nut for the table, right to left. So not only does it house this nut, but it's a two-piece nut, so it's adjustable. This is a fixed nut here. You can see it's got threads in there, so it's fixed. No adjustment in those screws. This side, it's got slotted holes, so you can take any slop that's in the lead screw out simply by twisting one of these right or left. It's right in the middle of the adjustments, so that, that's a good sign that it hadn't been messed with. So holds the lead screw nut. Also, it is a small power transfer gearbox with an on and off to transmit power from below, which is where the power feed motor comes in. So through this little handle here, there's a cam that either engages or disengages uh, the option of power feed right to left on the table. And that lead screw that goes through this nut, it's keyed all the way down its length. And when this engages, it just, it's powered by that key. You probably can't see it, but there's a key in there that locks into that lead screw. And that is what turns that lead screw, that key, and moves the table right to left. So pretty neat little setup there, all kind of packaged into a really small, you know, rigid uh, little casting. Nice. There we go. So I'm checking the oil pump. This is just a hand operated oil pump, making sure the oil's traveling through all the lines like it should. Just, you know, making sure that it's doing what it should be doing. And I mount this thing to the bottom of the casting and that's enough for now. All right, guys, that's it this week. Gonna have to stop here or else we just won't get a video because I am beyond out of time. I am super happy with the way that this has went together so far. Uh, not a machine rebuilder, not trying to present myself as one. You know, this is the uh, first one I've done to this extent, but I am very happy with the way it is fitting. Still got a lot of gib issues. 
going to have to address that both on the saddle and I expect that I'm going to have similar issues on the table gib which happens to be about you know seven foot long because the table was machined as well we'll see you know it I don't think that it's going to be out as much as this one but it's still going to be out of adjustment uh, I expect so all the innards are in the saddle I even stuffed the front on here which I didn't show all the gears need to be put in the front case. There's still a million little things that got to be done. And I am so glad, so glad that I labeled everything, bagged, tagged, wrote it down, took pictures, or else the reassembly of this thing would be tough after a year because this memory is not the best ever was. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever definitely appreciate it. Make sure, if you enjoy the videos, that is, to give me a thumbs up, click the bell if you haven't, and click it again if you have done it before, because it seems like YouTube, at least for my account, you know, anyway, I notice that uh, I don't get notifications on videos that I at least have clicked the bell on, which is not good. So click it again and make sure that it is active. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up, right? I've already said that. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time. Come on, Cora. Let's go in the house.